Hey everybody, Dave here. Today I'm going to show you how to delete a row from a data table in Power Automate Desktop. I should mention that at some point, I hope that this video will become pointless because I would like to see Microsoft add an action for manipulating data tables, including deleting rows. But in the meantime, this video will exist in case you need it. I should mention that I'm aware Power Automate Desktop's documentation indicates another way to delete rows from data tables using Excel. But if you've tried it, I think you'll see some of the problems inherent with it. And so I'm just not even going to show that on screen. Instead, I'm just going to show the way that I came up with like eight months ago and I use when I want to delete a row from a data table. That involves just a CSV file. So let me jump into that and show you how I do it. Before we actually build the logic that will delete the row from a data table, we need to do a little bit of logic to just get some data. So you could query SQL Server, you could read a table from a CSV file, you could read data from Excel. I'm just going to do it using Excel because it's the easiest way and I think that you're very likely to have gotten data from Excel when you're using a data table as well. Just note that Excel has nothing to do with my solution. This is purely being used in order to create a data table in Power Automate Desktop, and there are several ways to accomplish that. So let me go to the Excel group, and I'm going to bring over Launch Excel. I'm going to open an existing spreadsheet, and it's at C colon test CRM data XLSX. I'm not going to make this instance visible. I'm just going to open read only save and then i'm going to read from excel worksheets we are going to read all available values from worksheet i think this is a relatively new option in case you haven't seen this before but that's very useful it makes it a lot easier to grab data out of excel i'm going to go ahead and check both of these so i want to bring in the contents as text and the first line of the range contains the column names so i'm going to save that and then I'm going to close Excel. Do not save documents. We're good to go. Let's test it, make sure that this actually runs. Okay, now that that actually runs, I want to drop this into a subflow just so that we can tell and make it clear that this has nothing to do with the solution. So I'm going to name this subflow get Excel data. I'm going to go back to the main flow and I'm just going to copy all of these. Actually, I'm going to do Control X to cut. I'm going into the subflow and control V. And everything should still work, but I do need to run a subflow reference. So run subflow, choose get Excel data on our main page. And now we've got that. Let's go ahead and run it one more time to make sure it works. Okay, at this point, it does not matter if you got data from a SQL server or 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 from an HTML web page or what whatever. There's a number of ways to do this. At this point, from now on, is where we're going to start building the actual logic that we need for deleting a row. Uh, so let's go ahead and choose the row that we want. So I'm going to use set variable. Mm, let's make this a little bit more complex, I think, after we do this initially. I'm going to choose an arbitrary row, and then we're going to come back and improve the logic so that I give you kind of an example of when you might use this. But first, let's just make it simple. So let's call this target row. I'm going to set the target row to be index zero. So that's the first row in the data and not the header row. I'm going to save it. And then uh, what I want to do is create a subflow. We're going to name this delete data table row. Let's actually jump back up to the main page. I'm going to run subflow. From the main page, we're going to choose delete data table row just to make sure that's good to go. Okay, so in the delete data table row subflow, we have the data table in Excel data right here. Let's actually rename this. Uh, let's go to the main, let's go to Excel data. I want to rename the output from Excel data to data table in so that it's clearer what's going on. And I'm going to run this test one more time. Okay, so it gets Excel data. We've got 20 rows in data table in, and we're going to target this index row number zero so that Benny Bosworth gets deleted from this data table and we'll have 19 rows left. First thing we need to do is take the data table and write it to a file. So let's do write 
write to CSV file. This one should be the one that takes a data table. Yep. So we're going to grab the data table, data table in. I'm going to go back out momentarily. We're going to use set variable at the top here. And I'm going to create a variable called temp file path. And we're going to use this several times during the subflow. Does not matter what you type here because the way we're building this, the file doesn't need to exist already. If it does exist, it's going to get overwritten. So I would choose a name that, that you don't think a file will ever be named or something that's not going to be important. So what I'm going to do is save this to uh, temp.csv because any file I name temp is not going to matter. Save this. And then I'm going to reference this variable throughout some of these actions. In file path, I'm going to choose temp file path. I am going to go into the advanced section here. I do want to include column names and I do want to overwrite existing content. The other options don't matter. After I've written the data table into Excel, then I need to read it back out as a list because Power Automate Desktop has good actions for manipulating lists over in the variables section of actions. Read, read text from file happens to output the data as a list. So you can see variables produced. This file contents is a list. So I'm going to choose the temp file again. When I store the content, I specifically need to, I guess I shouldn't say that this is a list. It's only a list if you choose it to be. <laughs> so store content as list. Each is a list item and that's perfect. So this is going to output a list. I'm going to save this. Now that we've got it into a list, we need to remove an item from the list. So remove item from the list. Remember, I said I was going to do it by index, and we're going to use the target row variable. Uh, one thing I'll go ahead and mention at this point, though, is it's important to increment it. So I'm going to do plus one, take the target row, increment it by one. The reason being, now that we have retrieved it into a list, the way that it works, the first row is now that original header row. And so if the if when we call in and say, I want to delete the first row, we, we don't really mean the header row. We mean the one right after that. So we're going to increment it by one. Then I'm going to choose file contents is the list that we're going to delete from. And now we've effectively removed a row from a data table, but we need to get it back into a data table format. So we're going to write it back to a CSV file, but specifically make sure you use this other action, write text to file. We are going to choose the temp file path. The text to write is going to be our list. So file contents. This is what we've already deleted a row from. I'm going to turn this off for a pen do line. If file exists, overwrite existing content. I'm going to set that to true. Save it. And then the final thing we need to do now that we've written the list back into the file, we need to read it back in to Power Automate Desktop as a data table. So we're going to do read. But this time, instead of doing read text from file like we did earlier, where that put it into a list, we're going to use read from CSV file. And here's the temp file path. Advanced, uh, let's see, trim fields, true, doesn't matter. First line contains column names is important. We want to turn that to true, and then the other ones don't matter. Let's save it. Okay, so when we read this out, uh, we want to actually output it into data table out. Obviously, you'd choose whatever your data table is. You could overwrite the original. That, that works too. Okay, and so that should be it. Now, when I run this subflow, I'm going to hit a little breakpoint or run this. It's going to get data from Excel, which again is not part of the solution. The, the whole solution to this is inside the subflow. We are choosing a target row up here, which is something you'll want to do. I'm about to change that in just a minute to be more complicated as an example for when you'd really use it. But we have chosen the target row zero, and here's our data table in. This index zero row should get deleted, and then everything that's beneath it will move up one row. So Benny Bosworth will disappear, and Gwendolyn Stitwell will be the first row or in index zero. So let's go ahead and run this. And now our data table output shows that Gwendolyn Stitwell is now index zero and then Benny Boswell is not in the list anymore. So at this point, you uh, can just use this, right? If you've understood this concept and, and you've implemented it or maybe even just replicated the same steps, this should work for you. Uh, otherwise, there's one more thing I want to do and that is to give you 
a better example of why you would choose one target row or another. So let's use a loop for each loop. We're going to iterate over our data table in. Okay, it's going to give us a current item, which I'm going to actually rename this to be data row. For each data row in the data table, we want to check a value. So what we can do is use an if statement. Okay, first operand, we'll go with like data table in. Uh, I think I need to go look up the names of the uh, columns. So let's go with like last name. So if the last name is named Bonnet, let's say. Okay, so uh, Bonnet. So if data table in, I need to, I'm going to have to check the name of this again, but. So last name, you're right. There's no underscore or anything. Uh, so the way you format this is data table name. And then if, I don't know how small this is for you on the screen, but it's square brackets. And then inside the square brackets is single quotes. And then the name of the field. That's one of the ways you can reference it. You can also use index numbers for the column names. But so if the last name equals bonnet, then we want to delete the row. So I'm going to, let's see, we're going to put set variable in here. I think we need an else. And we want to increment target row. Uh, we, we want to increase. Increase variable. Target row increase by one. Or you could do set variable equals target row plus one. So when we come into here and we're looping in this data table, we are going to, we want to look at the last name. If it does equal that, then we are going to run. Let's see, we're going to set the target row to zero. We're going to check the first one. If it doesn't equal bonnet, then we're going to increment the target row by one. And then we're going to, it's going to loop up again. It's going to keep looping. And it'll, incre it'll keep increasing the target row by one every time it doesn't find a matching last name. When it does find a matching last name, it's going to delete the row and it won't increment, right? Because we just lost a row. So we don't want to increment again. So let's go ahead and test out what that looks like. I'm going to set a breakpoint at this point here and then we're going to run it. It gets the data for us. We're going to loop through, let's see, data row in data table in, and data table in. Uh, the only other change I think we might make at this point is I think, I think we might need to use the same data table as our input. So let's, let's just change this to data table whenever we get the data from Excel. And then when we loop over the data table, we'll call it data table. When we reference a field in the data table, we'll call it data table. And then um, when we run the subflow delete row in data table, we are going to use data table when we uh, get the data back out, we are going to write it into data table. So we should see no more data table out anymore. And the idea is that as we loop through this data table, it will be on row or index row zero first. If we don't find bonnet, then it'll go to index one, which would be the second row. If we don't find bonnet again, it'll go to index three. Let's say that on index three, we find bonnet. It will delete the row, but we'll still be on index three because now row four will have moved up one. And so when we loop again, we'll go to the next one. Now, 
The question is, how will this work if we delete a row from a data table we're currently looping over? So we'll have to test that. So here we go. Reads the data. Okay, we are gonna go in. Variable data table doesn't have a property last name. Really? Oh, right. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, here's the mistake we made. We gotta change data row, right? So when we're looping through the data table, we actually needed to reference the data row and then its column. Let's run this. I fixed it now. Turns out the problem is that, and I looked it up, there's actually a known issue for Power Automate Desktop where uh, the, the field names and maybe the data too, I don't know, it'll display incorrectly here and there's no known workaround for this. So this last name field actually has an underscore between last and name and there's no way to tell from here. So um, I have changed it so that it says data row and then in square brackets, single quotes, and then last name with an underscore, that works now. But in your case, right, you probably have a totally different field to deal with. So let's go ahead and run this test now. Um, it's gonna get the data. We've got our 20 rows of data, just like normal. And what we're looking for is bonnet, right? So like, uh, so bonnet is in the last name field in index three, so that's the fourth row. Let's run this. So this is the index row, zero. It didn't find bonnet there. Index row one. Index row two. And then this time we should see it go into the if statement true path and run the subflow delete data table row. So now it's gone into the subflow. It's going to write to the CSV file, read back from the CSV file into a list remove the item from the list, write back to the file, and then read it back in as a data table. And so we should see data table here, now having one fewer rows. So if we look at index three, now it's Karyata as the, or excuse me, Kinor as the last name, instead of the one that we just deleted, which was Bonnet. And now let's see if we can keep going and make sure it still works. We'll just run it through to the end, make sure there's no out of index out of bounds issues. And that's it. That's a bit better, I think, of an example of when you might like loop through the data you have, determine something that you want to delete, and then basically you need to you know track what target row you're on, pass that number in effectively by using uh, this, you know, set variable and increase variable for your target row. And then in your subflow, you can run this set of steps. Kind of ridiculous that this is a thing, but it does work. So I hope this has helped you. If we all get a chance, let's request that Microsoft add an action for deleting data rows. I think in general, Power Automate Desktop could really use some improvements regarding data table manipulation. It makes no sense for the primary support to be for list manipulation. I hope this has helped you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.